Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Hey, check this out. This is Slot Car Phil. You know, if you really like something, or maybe you have a passion for it, it's a hobby or what have you, then you should share it with others. So tonight I'm going to do that uh, with you. Uh, this will go up so that the public can uh, look at it. So if you got a text message saying that I'm doing a live broadcast, this one's going to be a quick unboxing of a slot car uh, that just came in. It's actually, again, another box from Hornby. Um, I'm going to open this up and just uh, grab one of three that came in. They're actually all three the same thing. So I'll pull this out and move this UPS box down. And uh, basically, this is number C3893AF. It is, again, uh, slot cars from Hornby Hobbies, also known as Scalectrics. Um, last time I did a video, I did a little live broadcast of just like the most awesome things you could get for yourself uh, or for your family members. Uh, to share as a game, and I presented a slot car set. Um, I actually showed you the International Super GT set from Scale Electrics. Runs around $89 or $99, depends on where you go get it. Uh, of course, you could decide to go on to YouTube, or not YouTube, but on to uh, some online shopping site, uh, be that a Craigslist, or eBay, or uh, Facebook Marketplace, uh, your local newspaper, whatever, uh, or a local hobby shop, or if you just Google it, uh, Skate Electrics is like this, and I'll give you a better look at the company logo, uh, but you can see the Skate Electrics uh, word right through the plastic there, through the bubble wrap. So anyhow, uh, this is part of Skate Electrics Collector Series. And slot cars are in the 132nd scale are typically based on real race cars. They're shrunk down to 132nd the size. That's why it's called 132nd scale. And after they're shrunk down in size, uh, they're modeled to look just like the real cars. Uh, not just the shape of them, but the actual paint jobs are after uh, real race teams. And in 2016, a Ford Motor Company well, I'll give you a little history. Back in the 1960s, uh, Ford Motor Company wanted to buy the Ferrari uh, car company. You've all heard of Ferraris. If you've ever heard of a car, you may have heard of fancy cars. And one of the fancy car manufacturers is Ferrari. They make some of the world's greatest sports cars and have uh, for the last six or seven decades. Anyhow, Ferrari was thinking about selling their company and Ford made a deal to buy that car company. And at the last minute, Ferrari decided they would not sell Ford the company, and it was just days before they were supposed to sign the deal. Well, Ford got upset. Ferrari said, well, we just couldn't see uh, selling our company to Ford and then having Ford put the Ford name on one of our beautiful cars that win races. So Ford decided that they would go out and try to beat Ferrari at the number one game Ferrari was good at, which is motor car racing. And so they entered into a campaign to win the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And that is the most, has been known to be the most grueling race in race car history. It goes 24 whole hours. Uh, typically, uh, Ferrari was a, a big winner in that, and probably the most winningest. Uh, group has been the Ferrari motor cars. So uh, Ferrari went after that and Ford went after it. And in 1967, Ford won. And so this uh, collector's edition uh, State Electrics kit is based on uh, that win in 1967. Uh, so for about three years in a row, Ford kept winning the 24-hour Le Mans race using a car called the Ford GT. And that car came in a couple of different incarnations. One of them was known as the Mark IV, and that car won in 67, took first place. And it was followed by two Ferraris in second and third place. Ferrari uh, Ford also won uh, the 24-hour of Le Mans, and at one point they won that uh, first, second, and third place. So uh, they actually took all three points on the, the podium. And, 
you can Google that or wait for a, a later video where I'll show you uh, skate electric slot cars based on that uh, winning combination of cars. Well, fast forward to 2016, and Ford hadn't raced in the 24-hour Le Mans in, I don't know, 40, 40-something 40 years, and I'd have to go look at my notes to, to remember that exactly. But they hadn't raced in, in several decades and uh, had a serious uh, entry into the 24 hours of Le Mans. And they decided that they would, in 2016, go back and try to win again. So uh, back in 2014, they started uh, designing their car, okay. and they came out with a modern version the of the car that won in 1967, right and that too is called the Ford GT. And if you Google it, you can see photographs. And if you have a little uh, extra uh, automotive uh, budget, you could go out and buy a new 2017 or 2018 Ford GT. They're about $450,000 for the car that you could then get in and drive around on the weekend or uh, back and forth to work and so forth. So the streetcar version's about just just under a half million dollars. Anyhow, that Ford GT in its racing livery won in 2016. It actually took the first place in the 24-hour Le Mans. It also, uh, a Ferrari was second, and then Ford took third and fourth place as well. So they did really well, two cars on the podium, and the car just off the podium was also a Ford GT. So this set uh, commemorates the 2017 running of the 24-hour Le Mans and the 1967 running, um, and they call it the 50 years of Ford at Le Mans Legends. So here's the packaging. And here's the box right here. I've already taken it out of its bubble wrap. Sort of, uh, and you get a look at this, and you can you see that uh, it's a pretty neat-looking box. Mm -hmm. uh, it commemorates the series. Inside the box, and when you those, open it, um, serves the same purpose. there and will be, car, put screws in it? inside the box, oh, this one? Yeah. the actual slot yeah, cars. So there they are, and if you look it's down here in the okay. middle, there's a little card here that uh, looks like a credit card, but uh, it's not doesn't have a mag stripe on it or a chip on it. Yeah, and that tells you uh, what number in a limited run of 2,000 to be sold globally uh, of this particular set with these two cars. There are going to be 2,000 of these sold globally. I have three of them here. And this one... Has run yeah. number yeah, hard to find when I found, like I told you, 68 okay. of 2000. I actually yeah. happen to know that I also have run number 67 of 2000, and I believe I also have number 69 of 2000. So I'll be keeping that uh, number 67 of 2000 for myself since the first car that won was in 1967 in this kit, and then the other car, the uh, number 67 which happens to be in this kit, uh, is also one of the modern Ford GTs. So if you take a look, I'll take the, uh, you can see that it comes in this nice commemorative box. It's got this plastic shell on it. I'll pull that off. You can just barely even see it with the camera in front of you. And you can now see the cars with their actual paint jobs on them. Uh, very clever looking, very nicely detailed and that's how it comes. Along with that, there's some text to briefly give you some history uh, on the cars, and you can look at the upside down view of the box while I read this to you. Whilst Ford won a fantastic 1-2-3 victory at the 1966 24 hour of Le Mans, 1967 saw them arrive with an even stronger team. Four brand new Mark IV Fords based on the earlier J car boasted hugely powerful seven liter engines with an impressive lineup of drivers. Despite taking first place, Ford couldn't replicate their dominance from the previous year as two Ferraris fi finished second and third. So the rivalry was on. In 66, they won, Ford won first, second, and third place. In 67, they took first place and Ferrari took second and third place. 50 years later, in 2017, Ford returned to Le Mans seeking another back-to-back -back class win. They had already won in 2016. The fairy tale result wasn't to be with the best place GTE finishing second in the class. That was the Ford uh, GT 
or E. And in the same lap as the winner, unlike the Mark IV though, which entered at its 67 win, the Ford GT is set to continue racing at Le Mans and other endurance races for years to come. So the new Ford GT uh, will continue to race. Uh, I'll pull the insert out here and pull those cars out so you can get a better look at them. And you can look at those. And uh, you don't really have to look at me. Look at the cars and just look at how nicely detailed those are. Um, that's pretty clever looking. You know, if you look at that car, it's really sharp. Uh, I'll kind of tilt forward a little bit so you can see the uh, the other car there. You can see that Mark IV. And now I'll spin it around so you can get a closer look at the Mach 4 with the uh, 2017 uh, Ford GTE in the background there. So, uh, very clever looking cars, really neat. I happen to already have one of the, uh, the 1967 versions of the car, the Mach 4, is already out here on the track. It's right here. And this is a car that won in 1967, uh, the year after Ford took first, second, and third place. So I actually have uh, one of the first place cars in the same uh, model set uh, or the model setup from this company, Scale Electrics. And uh, I have several of the 1966, 67, and into the 70s Ford GT models in my collection. Um, which tonight, I was doing some counting and I have uh, about 320, roughly round number, uh, slot cars. So I've got quite a few. Uh, you can hear my nephew in the background laughing because he thinks that's funny. And uh, I don't know that that's funny, but that's what the deal is. So you get these slot cars. Uh, they're a lot of fun to just collect. You can see that a nice uh, deal like this sitting on your bookcase uh, or on your display case in your... Uh, basement, whether you have a sports bar type of layout, or maybe you've uh, turned your garage into a little automotive palace. Uh, would call that a man cave, but it's not underground, uh, and it's not dug into the side of a hill. It's part of your house, so your man cave might have some cool models in it. I recommend that you get some of these slot cars, because then your models can move. Uh, they're actually uh, quite durable. And they take some serious crashes over on the racetrack behind me, over there where my nephew is now sanding the tires on a new uh, slot car that he just got. I believe that's a Panos uh, that he's working on. And if you if you could see behind me right now, or behind the camera, if I turn that around, you'd see that Tom is back there working on a Dodge Viper. So uh, some pretty neat stuff. And if I also turn the camera around. You would see Jackie bent over on the stairs, um, <laughs> shamelessly showing the world her back pockets. So uh, we won't uh, we won't turn the camera around right now because Jackie'd be less than happy with us. So uh, we'll just go with it that way. All right. So anyhow, uh, that's my quick little rundown on the uh, Scale Electrics. Fifty years at Ford. 50 years of Ford at Le Mans, uh, the 24-hour Le Mans Collector China. Series. Uh, really neat stuff. Uh, by the way, on the back of the packaging, there's a tremendous amount of text that is all safety warnings and so forth that are nothing more than just telling you uh, that slot cars are not something that you should put in the reach of your young children and have them eat them. Uh, eating slot cars is not uh, nutritious. So there are lots of little warnings back here about what to do. And it comes in several languages. Uh, the warning does. So uh, it looks like the people that manage safety on the planet are making sure that no young people, uh, you know, uh, under 36 months old, it contains small parts which can present a choking hazard and some components have functional sharp points and edges. Handle with care. Only use this product with the recommended transformer. So these slot car tracks run on electricity. So you don't want to put a 2,000 volt 
uh, generator or hook this d directly to high tension power lines because basically it vaporize it. But if you run it on a slot car track, you'll be uh, relatively safe. So uh, the warnings are on here. I'm always tickled by that. Uh, but that is the uh, 50 years of Ford at Le Mans uh, 24 hour Le Mans collector series. Uh, pretty neat stuff. Thanks for taking a look. I will uh, end this live stream and then I will uh, set the camera up in 3D and I'll go out and run these cars later on so you get a chance to see them on the track. All right. Thanks, everyone. Hope you uh, got some good information and maybe a couple of more ideas of things you could do at Christmas uh, for your family. Uh, that would be cool and unusual in, you know, your, your family youngsters uh, or yourself. If someone said, what'd you get for Christmas? Or you could tell them you got a tie. You could tell them you got some new shoes, a couple of tools, um, you know, a pair of gloves if you're a motorcyclist or a helmet or, you know, some running shoes if you like to jog. I'm just naming off stuff oh, I yeah, like yeah. to do. Uh, you know, you got a bandana. You know, I mean, you could talk about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Or you could say, I got a slot car set. They go, what's that? You go, oh, this is the coolest thing, and you've never seen one, but I have one, and you don't, right? And you know that in your man cave, that uh, says a lot if you got it and they don't. So it gives you something interesting to talk about, to look at, and to go over and mess around with. So it's not something you just show someone like, hey, look at this model that I have uh, that's made of plastic or die-cast metal, and it sits on this shelf, and I can pick it up and roll it around and go, look with my car go or I could buy a slot car and put it on a racetrack and press the button or move the accelerator and race the thing around the track with your buddies in your man cave how cool would that be uh, and yep if you're a motorcyclist they do have slot car motorcycles they don't go as good as the slot car cars because they're taller uh, sometimes they tip over a little bit but uh, they are out there. They are functional. Uh, and hey, if you're racing four motorcycles on a slot car track, you're still moving at whatever speed they move at. And a race is competitive. It's a race. So I would say get some slot car stuff for Christmas. Put it in your basement. Put it in your man cave. Put it in your special spot where you go to have cool, fun stuff. Put it in the corner of your home theater so when you're not watching something, you've watched all the movies time after time after time, you could then go These get some slot car really stuff the and get it going. So obviously I could get on my soapbox, tell you all kinds of stuff about why you should get slot car stuff, but uh, that's not really a subliminal message, but I hope it felt like one. That little earthquake, that was Tom kicking the tripod. So uh, he's going to go over now. That's Tom walking over right over there. So he's going to go over and run some cars, and uh, I'll do the same thing. I'm not really going to sign off. What I'm going to do right now is I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pick the tripod up, take you through another little earthquake ride, put the tripod up on the track, and I'm going to take this uh, 1967 24-hour Le Mans winning car. I'm going to put it on the slot car track directly out of the packaging so you can see how it runs right out of the box. It's going to be fast, and it's going to be cool. So... Let me do that. I'm actually going to pause you just for a minute because when I pause you just for a minute, if you're watching this, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get to see uh, a 3D view of the track, which is going to let you get a better look at what's going on around me. So uh, here I go. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, and by the way, I want to, I should give a couple shout outs. Uh, first shout out. Nope. I know she's thinking it's her, but it's not. My first shout out is going to go out to uh, young Zay. Uh, he is the uh, grandson of John Phillips. Uh, John, I know you came out here and you brought Zay out. You guys had a great time. Uh, miss you. Hope that you get back out here again. Uh, maybe I'll run across you in church. Um, I'd also like to give a little shout out to Chuck Warner. Uh, Chuck, I know that tonight you're out. Uh, you're out with a friend who's uh, suffering with some health. Uh, Ills and uh, Mary and I will have that friend in our prayers um, along with some other folks that uh, we have some concern and care about. Um, 
My nephew, uh, or actually my great nephew, uh, Aiden, if you happen to go over and bounce over to YouTube and see this, Uncle Phil says hi. Uh, thinking about you all the time. Wish you could make it out more often so that you could come out and check out some of this cool stuff. Um, it's usually pretty cool when uh, you come out and bring one of your buddies out with you. So uh, that's the deal. Uh, all the guys down at the Red Barn Raceway over at Gilmore Car Museum, hey, what's up? Uh, Kevin Yonkers, looking for you. Uh, Master Muhammad Boabdalawi, uh, 7th Dan, uh, black belt, um, uh, heavily involved in the Michigan Taekwondo Association, uh, does lots of stuff with uh, refereeing and coaching all around the, uh, the country. And uh, one of, you know, I would say out of, what, 4 billion people, uh, Master Muhammad's one of maybe 500 people that have the ranking he does with the World Taekwondo Federation. Uh, uh, so, you know, you think about the, these folks, they all slot car race. It's really cool. Um, so if you get a chance, get some slot car stuff for Christmas. Hey, uh, if Bob happens to see this, Mary Morales, uh, you have them go look at this, right? If you're out with your girlfriends, you can have them look at this and say, this is what my man is doing when I'm out having fun with the girls. He's slot car racing in his basement. So, anyway, that's the deal. Hope uh, you all are having a good time. Talk to you later. Slot cars.